So, you want to mod a Marvel vs. Capcom 3, huh? You want to get all those cool characters you've always wanted in the game. You want to learn the ins and outs of how to import and export a model. And on top of that, you just want to get it done super, super quick, huh? Well, too bad, because this shit is kind of wild. So you're going to need some time, you're going to need some patience, and for the love of God, back your shit up! <laughs> Alrighty then, before we get started we are going to need a couple of things. So first we're going to need TGE's importer tools, we're going to need a working copy of 3ds Max, now keep in mind this program is actually really expensive, so if you can't obtain one normally, college students can get access to it for free for a short period of time, or you can look into other methods. You're going to need Python version 3.9, you're going to need Yoshi's 3 work tool, Nvidia's standalone texture tools, and finally a list of the character ID that the game uses. All of this will be linked in the description of this video and the links are already available in one place at the model importer's actual Google Doc in the description as well, made by Yoshi and TGE. So step one, installing the importer. Make sure before you do anything to not have 3ds Max open while you do this. Also recommend when you're installing 3ds Max to place it in Windows default directory in order to save yourself some trouble in the future. Then you're gonna go into the model importer's folder and click on SRC, Python, MTIO, Modules, and then MT Max. From there, you're actually going to need two items from that folder. First, you're going to click on the setup.bat and allow that to run and follow its on-screen instructions. Then once that has finished, you'll be able to actually head into 3ds Max for the very first time. Once inside 3ds Max, you will be met with this screen, or at least one similar to it. And from there, you will want to navigate towards the tab on top that says Scripting. Run a script, and then head towards a directory from the previous MT Max folder and select Plugin.py. From there, you should have a new tab on the top that says MT Max. And if you don't, then reset your 3ds Max. And congrats! You now have the importer into 3ds Max. Importing Marvel's model. You'll have to get the characters.mod and .mlr files from the game, and this is where Yoshi's 3 work tool comes into play. Once you have the tool open, you will be met with this screen. Go to File, Open, and then head towards wherever you installed Marvel vs. Capcom 3. If it's in its default area, then you'll want to go to your local disk, Files 86, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, Native PC, CHR, Archive, and from there you will see all of Marvel's characters files that are named ARCs. In order to find the character slash ARC that you want, you'll need to navigate to that ID list and look for your character's number. Once you locate that number, you'll notice that Marvel has a set of numbers after the initial numbers and its underscore. Those numbers correspond to the slot slash colors the character has, so for 00, zero that is going to be your default color or color 1, then 01 is going to be color 2 and so on and so on. This is good to keep in mind so that you don't accidentally go looking in the wrong direction once you actually import it in the end. Once you click on your model's correct arc, you will see a file named arc at the very top of the screen. Right click it and select export all. Then you can just make a folder in the same arc space and name it whatever you like, but usually I tell people to name it the same thing slash number. Once you're doing that, we can once again go back into 3ds Max. So before you actually go ahead and touch anything, make sure to have your settings like this. From there, we are going to click on the three dots next to the import model file section and head towards the newly exported arc folder. We'll click on that folder, click it again, CHR, your character's name, model, whatever slot the color is, and finally select the dot mod of your character. From there, you should already have the settings selected and you can press the import button. Wait a few seconds and you'll have Marvel 3's model inside of 3ds Max. Now before you do anything, please make a save of this current scene. You should make it a habit after each of these steps to make a new save of 3ds Max's scene in case something goes wrong. Yoshi included some very good rules to follow when importing and messing around with models. Don't mess with the skeleton, which is the white things that appear when you first import the model. Don't go over the original game's poly count if you can help it. Guys, this engine is really old. You can't be throwing in PS4 and 5 models in the game and expect it not to crash and burn on you without fixing it first. Try to make sure your new model has similar or exact proportions to Marvel's. This will be elaborated on in the wrapping step. And then finally, don't add any new bones. But because you're watching this tutorial, it's likely that you don't even know what to do to start with, so you should be fine. Prepping the model. 
From here is where two branching paths of workflow begin to occur. You can either import your new model directly into 3ds Max and use the tools in there to make sure it overlaps and comes as close as possible. Or if you don't like 3ds Max, you can export Marvel 3's model as an FBX, load it into Blender, and then work from there. No matter what way you choose to work, your end goal is to make sure that your model is T-posed and that it is the right scale and size compared to Marvel's. A good idea to have in your head is that the model should try to be the second skin of your character, meaning it has to be really close to each other, or overlapping if you would. Now depending on what method you chose to do, you should have your new model T-posed. If you're working in Blender, just export the model as an OBJ and then import it into the same 3ds Max scene as your Marvel model. If it imports small, just use the scale tool and the move tool in order to realign it once again. After this, you can click on Marvel 3's model and you will see what group slash PRM that body part is in. Once you locate that body part, grab the most similar part from your new model and place that into the group. For example, if I were to click on Dante's arm, I'd want the new model's arm to also be in that same group. And you'll continue to do this for all the new model body parts. If your model only comes in a few body parts like body, legs, and head, then don't worry too much and just try to match it slash place it as best as you can. This is just so that the game knows what body part is what. Now, here comes the important step, the rigging. Before you go ahead and start rigging anything, make sure to collapse any modifiers you may have added by clicking on this icon. Right click any modifier and select collapse all. Then from there you can head to the right of that tab window and there will be a wrench icon. Click that and select reset X form option. Once that is done, select one of your new model's body parts and head over to the modifier list. Scroll all the way down till you see the option to skin wrap. And here is how you will be able to rig your model to marvel skeleton. Now. To prep the tool, you will need to make sure to have vertex deformation selected, make sure that the distance is 0.001, and scroll a little bit down to check mark the way all points option. From there, we can do a little prep work to save some confusion. Click on the drop down arrow next to a group and select a single PRM. Take notice to the viewport and if you see a blue outlined object, that means it's an actual object. Then click on the next PRM of the model and make sure that it is also an object. What you are doing here is to make sure that whatever you skin wrap is not a bone. Bones will not appear highlighted in the viewport so you can just click on the eye icon next to it if it's a bone PRM to hide it. Go through all of your PRMs and make sure to hide any bones or nine highlighted objects. Once that has been done, head back into your object skin wrap modifier and click on the add modifier. Now there are two methods to skin wrapping. You can either skin wrap all of Marvel's PRMs to one object and then copy and paste the modifier to the rest of your new model's objects, or you can wrap each body part to the body part that corresponds to it. The wrapping all method is only really recommended for those who are starting off slash testing things really fast, and the other is in order to get the cleanest rigging possible and to avoid any weird discrepancies. Once you've done the wrapping using whatever method you saw fit, you can scroll down and press the convert to skin button for all the skin wrapping modifiers you made. Once you've done that, congrats! You skin wrapped your model! Now, before we get to go in and export our new model, the material step. Oh boy, okay, so this one has caused people so many issues and confusion that it kinda needs to be its own section. In this section, I will do my best in order to guide you correctly. So Marvel reads its textures into three important file types. BM, which is the base color map of an object, it's basically what you will see on the model and what gives it its color. NM, which is a normal map. This is a raised detailed map that is in charge of telling the MM, the specular map, or I guess the lighting map, where to light certain things. Now that we know what each of these material types does, we can go ahead and begin the material step. So click on the M button on your keyboard and the material window should appear. Once there, make sure to click on modes and select the slate material editor. Scroll down all the way till you see only the scene materials. Once there, you will see if you pull the window to the side and click on one of Marvel 3's objects that a material will highlight itself. Double click on that material and a new material slate will open and it will have between one and three textures attached to it. Any texture attached to the base color map is your BM. Specular map is your MM and the normal map is your NM. The next step we will do will be assigning Marvel's materials to your new model so that it can read it correctly in game. You are going to select that same body part on your new model as you did Marvel 3's and make sure it is highlighted. Once doing so, return to your material window, it's easier if you have these side by side. And then make sure you have Marvel 3's mats clicked. Then go to material, then assign material to selection. You should notice that once you do so, your new model will have Marvel 3's textures on it. That is how you know you've done this step correctly. From there, you are going to go and replace the game's BM and MMMMs. 
But wait, there are a few things that need to be checked and changed in order to get all your textures slash maps to work correctly. First off, you're gonna go into Photoshop or whatever art app you use and load in all three of your new model's maps. First thing you're gonna wanna do is go to image, image size, and then make sure all your image sizes are 1024 by 1024. This is to ensure that the game will read them properly and it will be properly sized. Next is prepping your normal map correctly. When you first load in a normal map, you may notice that it is a bluish color. That means that it is incorrect. To set it up properly, you're gonna go into your image channels tab, and from there you will notice that there is no alpha channel. Click on the plus button to add an alpha channel, then make sure to only select the red channel by unchecking all the eyes except for the red one. Once you are there, select everything that is in the red channel and cut it. Then click on the alpha channel and uncheck the eye from the red one so only the alpha is visible. Then paste the red channel's content onto the alpha and you should end up with a pink normal map. Just make sure to recheck all the eyes except for the alpha now. Next, you'll want to click onto layers window and make sure that you lower the opacity to about 50%. This is to make sure that the normal map strength won't be too much and fit in more with Marvel's normal maps. From there, you can save it as a PNG and then you can open up the standalone NVIDIA texture tool that could be found in the description. From here, we are going to find that normal map PNG we just made and load it in. Once loaded, we are going to click on the highest compression quality and then where it says format, select BC3. From here, we can just hit the save as button and name it whatever you want, but make sure to have the NM suffix and make sure that it is a .dds format and you'll have your normal map. The last one we need to cover is the MM or the spec maps. And the only advice that I can give for these maps is to take a look at Marvel's MMs and compare them to yours. Is Marvel's almost completely black with a tiny hint of gray? Match that with your new model's MM. Once you've gotten all that sorted out, we can finally go back in and add the appropriate map to the appropriate slot. Once you do that, you will see that your new model will have its original colors back and it will no longer have that glossy look that 3ds max gave it you will then repeat this process for the rest of the body parts you have and boom that's the material step or at least the best way that i could explain it now for the final step exporting and testing before we go to export the model, we will have to make sure that we indeed XForm reset, and then we also have to have everything Marvel 3 related in the viewport hidden so that it's only the new model inside the viewport. Once you've done that, you can go to the MT Max button once again and open the importer. You'll scroll down until you see the model export text. From here, the first step is to click on the three dots next to the output model file, find where you placed the original .mod file that we first imported, select that, then it should appear in the text box. From there, the next step is to click on the dots next to the extracted archive directory and then make sure it points to the last folder where your character information is at. So if you follow this guide, it means that you will select the folder that has your slot labeled and that has these two files inside of it. Once you do that, just double check that the correct metadata YML file is selected. If it's not, then just select the three dots and point it to the right YML, close the plugin and then open it again. Next, you want to make sure that the generated MRL box is selected and that the material char is highlighted blue. From there, we just make sure that these boxes are checked and once you've done that, you can finally export your model. You are so close to being done. From here, you're going to go back into our three work window and scroll down to you see your character's number and P folder. From there, you should see an MRL and a dot mod box with your character's names next to it. You're going to want to right click on each of them and replace those files with their respective new files. From there, you're going to click on the plus button on the textures folder under MRL and you will notice that your new models textures are now listed there along with the potential default NMMMs. What you need to do now is right click on the slot color folder, it should be a number NP, and select to import multiple textures into the folder. From there you're going to navigate to your folder once again and there you will see all these .txt files inside. You will need to import anything that is listed in the textures folder into the number P folder. So once you import your textures, you will notice that it appears at the very bottom of the P folder. If it is left as it is, it will not read correctly. You will need to move up the textures to the top by clicking on the texture and pressing control and the up arrow on your keyboard and bring it all the way up. Make sure to do that to all of your textures until your arc finally looks like this. All of your textures are on top, then your new MRL and mod files. From here, we can finally go to save, file and because the file directory is already pointing to Marvel's arc, we can just hit save. Go into your Marvel game and go into the gallery. Select your character and go to the color you modded. Once there, you should be met with your model imported into Marvel. And if you cannot get your model to load in and it gives you an error saying that it could not find a dot text, then I suggest you relook at what's listed in the textures folder and make sure that it's in their number P folder. But that should be it. 
you have now imported your own model into Marvel vs. Capcom 3. You will notice that there might be some error and polishing that needs to be done, but for now, that brings us to the end of the tutorial. Thank you all for watching and thank you to TGE for their wonderful work on this importer. Now go out there and play some motherfucking Marvel, baby.